Well, joining us on the program today is uh, Mr. Victor Giwa, who is a legal practitioner, and he will be discussing on ways of restoring public trust in the judiciary as we look to establish um, the focal point of our conversation today. Do well to remember that you can join the conversation online across our social media platforms and do well to also keep the comments coming in, keep them cordial, keep them respectful and keep them engaging. Barrister, you're very much welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, wonderful to have you here. Well, let's uh, very quickly delve into matters of the day. Uh, we have seen that in recent years, a lot has happened in the judiciary that has sort of shaken the trust that the Nigerian populace have for the judiciary. Now, you are a barrister, you are in the system, and you tend to, you know, understand things, the inner workings of the judiciary more than, you know, the common man out there. What do you think caused this little shake-up in the trust that people have for the industry that you are in, or the system you are in? Well, thank you so much. It's a very difficult question to answer. And um, well, uh, 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 firstly, I would say it is unfortunate that um, it was it was Lord Dining that said in the case of U.S.C. versus Mark IV in 1962 that justice is based on confidence, and confidence is destroyed. When an ordinary man on the street looks at the judge and says the judge is biased, it means that confidence, justice is anchored on confidence. And when the people lose confidence in the judicial system, it means that they, they cannot obtain justice. Yes. Following or flowing from your question, the Attorney General, current Attorney General, Latifa, Prince Latifa Gumi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, a well-respected -res senior advocate, said some few things. Said some things some few weeks ago. He said the judiciary is now for the big men. It's now for the rich. Let me quote him properly. Say, judiciary is now for the rich. Meaning justice can be bought. That it means that this is this current Attorney General. And um, it was unfortunate that we are hearing things like this coming from even somebody who should know better, or somebody who knows better. And it is just one of the major challenges we have with the judicial system. Yes. And again, before I look at those, what are the causes, I want to say generally that the judiciary, the judicial officers, I mean, are all Nigerians. They go to the same market we go to. They live in the same place we live in. They have, they have children, friends, just like any of us. So the problem of the judiciary is not different from the problem in other arms of government, other sector of our public life. Yes. Because it's made up of the same people. Exactly. So if there is corruption within the populace, there is corruption in the public sector. There will also be corruption in the judiciary because you cannot separate. I mean, they are not, they're not living in a different world. So if there is a problem with the populace, if there's a problem with the system, if there's a systemic problem, you cannot isolate the judiciary from it because judiciary is a product of the system. But one expects that as a member of that particular sector, there should be some level that you live above what we call living above board. I mean, they say he that come to equity must come with clean, with hand. clean hands. That yes. if you are a member of that particular area, you should exercise certain level of constraint or restraint as it were. But um, unfortunately, the system has polarized that sector of of, of the country yes. other arms of government and so what we have what we are seeing is a case where i mean people don't and why are they not losing why are they not getting confidence because they don't get justice like that in general i said justice seems to be for the rich and what does it mean it means that the justice you get are purchased it means that the justice you get seem to be transactional people because justice is what you can get from the books the law is settled we said in law there is precedent so you should be able to know 
when a judge gives a judgment that what we say in law it is perverse it is only in nigeria for example well let me not say in only in nigeria it is where i know that you see counter orders coming from everywhere we have seen in the judiciary where an expert expert order has been used to remove a judge in this same nigeria we have seen in this same country where expert order has been used to remove emirs I was listening to one social media, to, uh, you know, recently, yeah. a social media post, you know, and somebody was saying that it is through the judiciary we have two emirs in a particular state in Nigeria. That is through the judiciary we have two, two um, deputy, deputy governor in the state. Yeah. And so these are the issues, these are the things that affect public confidence. So we need to, the reason for this is because of the way and manner the system generally has been perverse. The corruption in the system, the dysfunctionality of the system, it has unfortunately found its way to the judiciary. Well, you, I, I, I believe that a lot of Nigerians uh, in the last um, nationwide protest, you know, that uh, made Nigerians hit the streets, uh, share a, a similar opinion with regards to the restricting or restraining orders that, you know, the police got from the courts to restrict protesters to certain parts or certain uh, restricted areas, both in Lagos and in Abuja and the rest. Uh, and a lot of people have argued that somehow the judiciary seems to have become a tool that can be used at will by security op operatives or by people in other arms of government, talking about the uh, legislature and the, the um, executive as well. Well, if you notice, when you were talking, I was laughing. I was laughing because uh, I was one of the first, if not the first, that criticized in one of these channel, in one of the stations, that um, I, I, in, in that particular TV station, I told them that this is the first time in I am, I mean, I'm not too young, you know, that I'm hearing that people want to go and protest, and government officials, state government, got a court order to restrict, to restrict protest them. to a particular place, and what is the challenge? with that order. It is a fundamental right everywhere in the world as contained in chapter 39 of the 1999 Constitution, Article 9 of the Fundamental Right, fundament, uh, Africa Charter on Human and People's Rights, and United Nations Charter. The right of freedom of expression. Protest is a form of expression. Yes. It is not just a, a constitutional right, it's a human right. Now, there are constitutional rights that are not human rights. Human rights are those rights that accrue to you on, on the ground that, on the fact that you are human. You should be able to express yourself. You should tell your father and your mother. As long as it that, does not pose harm to yeah, another person. No, you are, as, as long as, as you don't, that you don't, it doesn't amount to threat or, or injury or violence and all of that. So, and you cannot, you cannot contemplate protest yes you cannot say oh this your protest will lead to violence you cannot contemplate that unless it happens uh, no so what you do as if you have that fear that where do you why do you have the security agency why do you have the various institutions intelligence you infiltrate the people to know anybody who is actually violence then you get those people and you need them on the, in the board do you understand yes so you don't now create get a court to give you to to give you an order to now the same persons who want to express themselves. So like this, it was general police said, yes. it was to, they were supposed to be guided anyway. So you see, it was the court order that they used. But, but should, should, that shouldn't the, the judiciary, shouldn't the judges themselves have known better as to not have agreed to the request of the IGP and other um, police commissioners who made this request no, to, it, it to it was the not the, It was not the police that made those requests. It's some of them came from state governors, state governments, yes. and to the general law officers, some private persons and all of that. You know, in that of in that of Abuja, I know it was gotten by the FCT, uh, whether the FCD, FCT, 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 administration okay, yeah, FCT. that went to court, yeah. So, um, you see, it is just part of the balkanization and the um, the grappling, the the, the the I'm losing lack of the right word to use now. The, the breakdown of uh, no, the system. compression of the system. Yeah, you know, the system have been so compressed by the elites, by the politicians, such that these judges, 
who pays the judges? The money of the judges comes from the executive. Yes. So the executive are the politicians. So they, 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 they determine any judge that is appointed must be approved by the president, which is the executive. Certainly. In the state, the governors. So you see, if, if you want to be, you know, the governors, the politicians have so much control of what happened. That's why we're talking about judicial independence. There is no independence as of today for the judiciary. So if you want to be appointed as a judge, you need to go to the executive. You need to make friends with the members of the executive who are strictly politicians. And, and, you, and you, you also see. have to be cleared by uh, the uh, legislature. Yes, who are also politicians. So at the end of the day, you see cases where even the judges now have the wives, children of politicians all around them. And you see, that is this how strong. I'm not I'm not saying that it's not it is wrong for the child of politicians to be judges if that is their career. But what we are saying now, when we see certain trend, you will not it, it, it gives you a signal of the level of influence over within that sector by the politicians. So that's the point I'm making. So it, the judiciary has been so much infiltrated and because the politicians, they know that, and of course, that Nigeria now, you want to determine who is, an, who, who is legitimately elected to an office. The person that takes the final decision is the judge. Is the judge. Is the court. Yes. So now they now know that that is the end point. So they make sure, they ensure, they do everything within their power to infiltrate that point just for, just for the purpose of sustaining them in power. Well, well I, was, I was going to come to this barrister. Uh, we've seen in recent years, in successive elections, both national elections, uh, state government elections, even local government um, elections that have held in Nigeria, where somebody wins an election and then the opposition party says, oh, let's meet in court, or it's, it's always this issue of let's meet in court. We know that the court will be the final decider and maybe appeals upon appeals will be made. But somehow, that's sense of less meet in court has made people lose trust not only in politicians but also in the judiciary that is supposed to be for the people for equity for justice and for fairness very unfortunate i'm i'm, I'm feeling so pained i i'm i'm i i i feel i i really feel so pained that this is this is the this reality is that we see now that is the reality as a matter of fact it's not even in government it goes to as as pedestrian as people on the street you have somebody who disagree with you say ah take go court go to court and that is a a a that is like they believe that, 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 that the that highest the highest the leader system. wins that is the really clean of the system you ridicule really the system oh go to court because that is what the government does you do anything go to court yes. one they know that you will not get you will not get you will not get justice, justice from the court. They assume that it, the system can be manipulated to favor the person that has money. They believe that the system it, it can be can be can be mod, can be manipulated to favor a particular person. And they believe that the justice, even if you are going to get it, is going to be you will get it maybe after the the if, when you even get it, it will not be of any use to you. Yes. So it, it is a mockery of how that system is. So everybody that anything that happens, you are calling with your wife, you you somebody steals a thing, somebody victimizes you, the only thing you will say, go to court. If you don't agree with me, go to court. And it is because everybody just believes that the court is not serving its purpose in their mind that the court and I think that uh, it is it is a very it's a clarion call for members, persons who are judicial officers, that the government itself, the people themselves should look at that our sector with a view of correcting it. However, I need to say this, that it is not all bad for the judiciary. We still have judicial officers who are competent, judicial officers who, have, who are standing above, but judicial officers who can tell you that when you come to their court or when you approach their court, you can get justice. I was also had by saying that the, even there have been efforts by the NJC, by the institution, to also correct these abnormalities, to remove some of this bad head. But whether this effort is enough is something that I cannot see right now. But is there effort? I can tell you there are. Are there good judges? I can tell you there are. Are there certain cases where you can get justice? I can tell you, yeah, there are some. But in the larger scale, people have lost confidence in the, in the judicial system. 
it is very regrettable and it is not good for the country. Now, now Barrister, it is not news that, um, like you rightly pointed out, people have lost trust in the judicial system and the Nigerian judicial system itself is far lagging behind in terms of justice delivery to you know the populace. What form of reforms can you, do you think, in your opinion, can be implemented in order to close up some of these gaps make up for some shortfalls in the judicial system and restore that faith and trust that the populace have always had for the judiciary? Good question. The first thing is that there must be judicial independence. And what do we mean? Let me break it down. So that, that's a big grammar. Judicial independence means that the judiciary themselves should, be, should, should control their recruitment process. The recruitment process is such that it does not need influence or any interaction from the other arm of government. For example, if you want to be a governor, you go out there, you do election, you are sworn in. You don't need anybody to interfere. Right? Yes. So if you want now if you appoint if you have been appointed as a judicial officer, you need recommendation from the NJC approved by the president. Did you see? You have not brought in the executive. Yes. Interference in the in the legislature. All you need to do is contain an election. You are sworn in. You are you are sworn in by the clerk, and you are now a legislator. But in judiciary, you are recommended. The yeah. president has to approve, cleared by the by the legislature. By the legislature. Why should it be that way? So there should be that when you are appointed, the the, the, the judiciary under the judicial NJC have a, a, a panel that will clear you. When you are cleared and they approve you, you I, I, I mean, right now, it seems like the, the entire notion of, of checks and balances, you know, amongst the three arms of government is, is completely overruled. It, it appears to be that it's just the executive and the legislature that are now checkmating what the judiciary does. And the judiciary... No, they're not even checkmating what the judiciary does. They are compromising... They are compromising judiciary. and controlling the judiciary. Correct. Not checkmating. Because the purpose of check is to bring what we call checks and balance. Yes. It's to see if you are going wrong, if you are going outside the line to bring you. But what the what just to correct that point you made is the executive and the legislator are not checking. They are compromising. They are on the weak and you know and winking the, the judiciary. Yeah. So they tell them what they want to get. They try to you know if next time if you come with your candidate, we are not going to clear you. When you bring your budget, we are, we don't need time to defend your budget. Well, because it is exactly well, well, well then let, let's call it what it is blackmail of course that's what it is it is blackmail. so until we have such kind of reform where the njc or other institutions look at the recruitment process declared members of the judiciary if you meet a particular standard you are cleared if you if, if, if uh, your, the process is transparent certain persons now looks at it maybe retired justices they they will now number of the retired justices they will be in a particular panel they look at the qualification of a jury of, of a of a an of, of, a, of an aspirant who want to be a judicial officer and the person is cleared when it is cleared then they say approves you and gives you your letter of appointment you resume your work you don't need the clearance from the uh, legislator you don't need the approval of the president to us that is the first part of call to have an independent independent judiciary but if you cannot have that you have a case where the judiciary comes with his budget he goes to the national assembly to, the, the, to go and clear it's, it is from that point he starts negotiating the members of the legislature will be telling you that and um, please i have my daughter she wants to become a judge i hope you are going to allow blah 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 then they get to the executive they start giving their names a lot of compromise they, so, so you see that at that point the process become porous and they become hand wink and then at that point justice will not be negotiated well, another uh, major issue of concern is how fast, you know, or the, the slow pace of, um, uh, of cases in the courts, where you find cases that ordinarily shouldn't have taken more than a year, lasting for five years or almost a decade. Uh, how do you... How do we create an enabling environment where cases are quickly dispatched in court, you know, in and out, in and out, as opposed to having cases that linger for far too long, that even when, when uh, the cases end or justice is served eventually, it's almost as if there's no point of, of, of it being served at that point. Again, that one has to do with um, certain administration. For example, administrative issues. For example, one facilities 
as I'm talking to you today, 80% of our judges are still writing their, you know, they're doing handwriting. They write their, their ruling, they, they write the, the submissions of, you know, with their hands. With their hands. So Other there's no places, automated system. There's no automated system. So you need to write everything that the lawyer is saying. I mean, you need to give it to them. I, I, I don't know how, how I can stand that kind of pressure. When you say A, the judge has to write A, you guys have to... I mean, you are writing almost everything. How, however... They should, they are, we are supposed to have, at this point, have an automated system where the judge just lists, just takes some certain points. Some jottings. Some jottings, and about the time he gets, goes into his chamber, he pulls it out, everything that has been said, he reads it, and makes his... his well, his could, could, this, could this be to... So the first thing is the, the, the reason for some of these things. Then, two, we have... We need to have more judicial officers have more courts have so that you know nigeria is, is a country of over 250 million people so we have a, over 250 million problems so you need more than a million judge at least to be able to attack address these issues yes we don't have we don't have such number of cases in short you see in when we get done judicial um when they're doing our annual judicial year you will see that they will tell you about over half of the cases have not been resolved in the cases that are filed from the trial courts. So there are a lot of places that need to be addressed. The issue of uh, facilities, the issue of law, the issue of even the security agencies, the, 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 the police, the other aspect of the judicial, which is justice, the, the justice system, the institution of the, of the security agency. It is not all, all, all cases that should go to the court. There are some cases that are very straightforward. But you see, in if the police, the security agencies too, also pushes, you know, they push their cases to the to the to the court. And now the 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 then you have the issue of the prison. Sometimes you bring a case to the court, the witnesses are not there from the from the custodial centers to bring the witness. The police say they are doing investigation. The investigation is not thorough when they get to court. So the preparedness even of the lawyers too also contributes. Talking about the delay in justice delivery. Yes. So sometimes too, even the lawyers. Have not as are not also equipped enough. They are not. They are not also prepared enough. But of course, they take advantage of the of the, of of the 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 porosity of the system. Because if you are a lawyer, I mean, if you go to other climate, I've had the I've had the option. I've had the privilege of practicing in in places like the UK. I mean, you come three. You don't go to court for four five times. By the, by the time you attend court in three four four times, you should be you should be able to tell you when. When the case, the, the, the case will end. When the case will end, I will give you a good example. The case of James Ibori yes, started from from a trial court to the Supreme Court, and he was not convicted. Yes, he went to London, and before he knew he was convicted, less than a, less than a year, mm. and as the story, is, I mean, I think we all know the end of the story. Exactly, that is how justice system works. Because they do that, first of all, they start with the pre-legal issues, which is the investigation. That is not done by judicial officers. The police do their job. The DSS do their job. The other agency, they do their job. All what you bring to the court are the evidence. The evidence. So the, the court is not mm. to provide the evidence. So you see, the problem with delay in the justice system, some start from the judicial officers, but more of those start from the investigation investigation and other aspects of the administration of justice. Now, now considering that courts um, you know at the subnational level, especially in Nigeria, are worse off than the uh, federal courts, what can be done to bring in some sort of efficiency into the system? You have you know pointed out that some of the reasons why there is delay in justice is you know uh, well apart from the courts themselves having their own uh, short Falls and shortcomings, mainly investigations from security agencies, uh, is another uh, you know factor hinging uh, or hindering the uh, fast pace of justice delivery. So, what can be done to mitigate this and create more efficiency in our courts? Yes, yeah, so I think funding. Funding is very key. You need to fund the judiciary. You need to, the judicial officer have to be have to be have to have confidence. Security of their offices, like we are saying. If you know that as a judicial officer, if you are doing your job, no governor will say it's against you. No person, if you are a state high court judge, you will yes. not be threatened by the governor or any politician. You know that if you dispense justice, because the issue is that justice should be dispensed with, no matter who is, who is whose ox is God. Yes. Justice, must, justice should be said to be done. Let everyone fall. 
or justice must be done, let the heaven fall. So you are, we don't do that kind of justice that heaven will fall. In, if you want to do that kind of justice, you'll be afraid that, no, you don't want heaven to fall because somebody's going to go after you. So security of office is one key. It's one part that is key. Every judicial officer needs to be secured, need, need to be assured that when he does the job, he will only suffer when, I, when he has gone against the law or, or is assured that at the end of his tenure, whether it is in terms of age or retirement, he is secured of that place. So that is one. That which is legislation. Two, like I said, there need to be funding of the judicial system. They need to fund them. We need to have judicial officers. They need to have a number of their staff. Do you understand? They need to be assured that they have enough materials for them to do their job. Training and retraining. Judicial officers need to have good environment to work, yes. good work environment. They need to be assured of their salaries. They need to have good salary. They need to be living in a very good place. I mean, if you know that when you retire, you have a place for you, you your, your children are on scholarship, why would you want to collect a bribe to do what? Certainly not. You know, so when you know that when you, when you, when you, when you finish doing your job today, when you finish as a, as a judge, nobody, you are not going to be going to somebody to be begging for employment. Well, well, how about so how, how about the the um, you know continuous impromptu postponement of uh, suits across Nigerian courts? It's another major uh, problem that uh, both lawyers and uh, people you know bringing cases to the courts have always complained about. You know, impromptu postponements. They come to court, they discover, oh, uh, our Lord Justice has decided. To, to postpone the case to another day. And this goes on and on and on and on. It's, it's becoming quite problematic. Now, the issue of postponement, 80% of these postponements are from the lawyers and some other factors, like I mentioned, people of the correctional centers, the police, and the lawyers. Yes. But I also want to say that the judges also have some role to play because as a judge, you are in charge of your court. There's nothing wrong if you, if you come to the court and today and you say, which some judges do, oh, my Lord, I'm not ready, we, we need an adjournment. My Lord, the judge will tell you, no, if you don't, if you cannot continue today, I give you the last chance. Yes. If you come back tomorrow, I've, and I, we have seen cases like that, where the judge will tell you, no, if you are not serious, let's strike out this case, than keeping this case on our course list, on our file. So it is a problem between the moving from that oscillates from the judicial officers themselves, the lawyers and the external factors, which is like the security agency, you know, from sometimes you get to court, there is no power. I mean, the judge, we don't want to sit in the court. But when you get to court, they say there is no power. You have to wait for foil and there's foil scarcity. Or the journey is not working, so the court cannot sit. Or sometimes the judge is sick. Do you understand? So yes. talking about facilities, what are the healthcare facilities for these judges? So these are the, some of the these are the issues that that culminate to adjournment. If the if the judge if the lawyer does not ask for adjournment, the judge should not grant adjournment. There should be no reason why the lawyer should not come to court. Like I was mentioning in England, yes, when they give you a, for, when they tell you that your case is today, they expect you to come with everything you need. As a matter of fact, they have Zoom. If you say you are on, in the hospital. They will tell you, put yourself, go to the, use Zoom. I've been to, cause I've been in in UK, where the, the person said, oh, like in Nigeria, if you traveled, they'll tell you, oh, the person just traveled, he went on. When I was in court in UK, and they said, no, they, they told the person, you are in America. Join not connect, the court, connect I to mean, Zoom. The technology has made everything a lot connect more to easier. Zoom. You, are, you are a witness, so whether you are sleeping, in a month, can you talk, say yes, on that day, we'll be putting you up by 9, p 9 a.m., you need to be co connected. So, and they took the weakness from this is about five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yes, we are finding it yes, difficult to, to affect in Nigeria. We still Nigeria. have a problem with that. If somebody says, "Oh, the witness is not around," he traveled. Oh, he went to Lagos as he was coming. The flight, he missed, missed his flight, or the flight was delayed. It in becomes, it becomes, it becomes a, you a, a hamper on, on, on But on you it. can't do that in, in developed countries. They tell you, no, you don't need to even fly back. Stay in your hotel and hook up to Zoom. And they will take you you will take you out and everybody will ask these our questions and they get done with you you see so these facilities you know are not there and these are the things that also 
hamper. Well, well there, the there, there are certain things or aspects of the judiciary I want you to, to react to. Um, I know you have touched on some of them earlier when you mentioned uh, the likes of recruitment, uh, means of recruitment and all that in the judiciary. However, I want you to still touch on recruitment, appointments, and tenure of office, very importantly, security of office, structure, and institutions of the judiciary. I I've talked, how, I've well, 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 how, how, how can all of this, in, in particular now, I want you to touch on tenure of office. It, it appears to be that some judges tend to stay in office far longer than others, especially when these judges have been brought in by strong hands in the executive who have decided to keep them there for the, the purpose of... Um, what you mentioned earlier. Okay, the truth is that the tenure of judges as are today is constitutional. It's either you have 35 years as because any judge, especially from this, from the upper courts, yes. superior courts, you are a judicial officer and you are a public officer. So your your tenure is regulated by the rules. It's either you have spent 35 years as a public servant. Or now this year, the age, the year has been extended by, by the new en enactment. So it was 65 years, age, or 35 years, on active service, whichever one comes first. But now I, it, the law has been amended to increase it to 70 years. So if you are appointed as a judge when you are 40, you have 30 years. You know, so nobody can influence it except where there are misconducts. You were punished and you were sacked. Yeah. You know, so those are the two. So that no politicians can reduce or hurt to somebody's age. You know, I have I'm not aware of that because it is a constitutional matter. Yes. The number of years you are going to stay. It, it can be tampered it, with. You know, it cannot be tampered with. Well, the, the politicians in Nigeria can actually do it. They are anything. unpredictable. Yes. But let me let me just raise one point and I wish I just pray that people to see how bad the system is. I was handling a particular case. Yeah. You know, in, in of course in Abuja. A man bought a land and, and just to tell you how bad talking about this issue raised, a man bought a land from somebody, he discovered that they he paid about fifty million, he discovered that the land has issue. So he took the case to the police, the police took the case to court. Now, because of the way the police handled the matter, the man felt frustrated. The police said, Don't worry, we are going to take it to the court. And so he took it, they took it to the court. The man's wife was sick as a result of because they felt that it was their savings they used to put for the to for pay the for, the, for, for the for the case yeah. for the land oh, for, for the, the land, land. Okay. yes okay. and so when they thought that when they felt that the land was actually defective the title that you know so the woman the wife felt bad that oh we have invested this amount of money and now this thing becomes for us and the, and the police took the case to court guess what the woman felt sick as a result of that she died now. The man was coming to court from Portaco. The case was lodged here in Abuja. Federal court here in Abuja. So the man was coming to court. The man fell sick and the man died. The case is still going on. But, but the point I'm making is that for over five years, this man who wanted justice, could not the wife get died, it. the man died. And I mean, I mean, that's the delay in justice that we were talking the about. problem we are talking about. And guess what happened? I was in the case. It's not a story I'm telling you. The judge that was handling that case had more than 50 adjournments. On one particular case. 50 adjournments. I can 50 adjournments. Well, in, in this situation, and we so, would say it's not, it's, not that the, it's not the fault of the lawyer or the fault of the police in providing evidence. No, it was not that it was not fault of any of these persons. This one, the judge was the judge. Why, why, what happened? The judge was transferred to Asaba. He was brought back. When he was transferred to Asaba, they said he will be taking his, he will be coming to take the cases he started. So the judge will come. When he gets to the court, he will say, no, I need to take only three cases. And guess the cases he will take. The case of some politicians. The one that has to do with OPDP deflect from APC, APC de deflected from PDP. So that one that is private. Cases that are seen yeah, as that, priority. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So those ones that for that young man, and the man, Travels from Portacourt for his case. Can you imagine the the plane the the plane, the plane tickets. coming from Portacourt just to get to the court, and the judge will look at it and say, "No, I'm tired. I will just do case A, B, C, 
because he's not a politician. He's not a politician. He's not a very rich person. So nobody can influence anything. And the man died. Another issue that uh, most people have clamored for in recent years uh, is the need for you know court rulings to be televised or sort of transmitted electronically to the public, especially matters of national interest in terms of maybe in, in an election uh, matter or in an electoral matter where it's been taken to court or in a case like that of Nandikano that has been, you know, in the hands of the DSS and has been in and out of court for, for quite some years now. I know it is perhaps a rule in the judiciary for cases not to be televised but do you think that we will gradually or eventually get to a time in our country and in the judicial system where cases can be openly televised for the people to see i think for those political cases i think that um, it would be it would be important that that the cases are televised i mean there's nothing to hide let people hear you i remember the, the, the one of the cases i i watched which is uh, that of the conviction of uh, Ekwe Madu that was, you know, the, the, the video good went by. I learned a lot listening to the to the judge from his judgment. You know, it was of course it was recorded. You need to see. I saw the argument. I saw the I saw the the reasoning. I saw where he disagreed with the argument of the lawyers from the from the defense. I saw how we agreed with the lawyers from the state. You know, you, you, you become enriched, you become refreshed. You know that you now see why that there was no corruption. You can see that why there is no compromise. He told us when I listened to the judge in that case of a criminal in the UK. Yes. You he was the, the judge was telling the story of how the young boy was moved from his village, how he got to Lagos, what brought him to Lagos, how he was selling uh, um um, phones, accessories. I was using, I was using Willy Barrow. It was from the judge, from the judgment of that court. I got the history of how everything started. Who was the boy? From what state he came from? What he, how he moved because from Because a thorough investigation because was a made. thorough investigation was, they went, the investigation was such that they saw, they knew where the, that whole, the guy left his place, when he got to Lagos, what he was doing in Lagos, the kind of business he did, how he grew, his parents, how he was contacted, how he moved. You will see a forensic systematic investigation. Why? Because we have an opportunity to see the judge. And you will see the demeanor of the judge. You will see the way he talks. She, 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 she was passing the information. Calmly. I mean, you see that calmness. You see this, not, the judge was not under any form of pressure. You find that there is confidence. You could see that he was just doing his job ordinarily without any fear or favor. Or so this uninvolved this is what gives confidence to the system. People can think, oh no, this is good. Oh no, that means I can get justice. But when you do your ruling and they say we should put it on air, you are saying no, as if something was wrong and all of that. I don't think it helps in boosting public confidence. I mean, the, 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 the last time that we saw something similar to this or close to, you know, the um, assertion I just made was during the Oputa panel. Uh, you know that uh, we all probably we all know it was you know televised and uh, even though some people share different sentiments with regards to the outcome of the Oputa panel, uh, but don't you think that the judicial system sort of owes Nigeria that kind of ac ac accountability that was given to Nigerians during the Oputa panel? But seriously, I, I I really don't know why, for any reason, the the, the court system should not be televised. I, I, do, I don't know, if I, I cannot put up any reason now why a court system sh you know, should not be televised. I well, mean, well, I well, 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 some, from, from the things I've heard, some say that it's so that the entire case will be kept from the public so that there won't be any form of so that there won't be any form of interferences from you know stakeholders or people who have an interest in the case until <laughs> there is a ruling by the judge. This is an explanation I've gotten from a lawyer in the past. No, 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 no. That, now, that what is, is your own <laughs> assertion? What is your own take? No, that is laughable. If somebody wants to influence anything in the court, it's very open. The court is an open place. Why do you want to? Why do you need the TV? to watch it for you, if you can influence it. Those cases that have been influenced, were they televised? Those cases that we told you that the judge, that the attorney general said that justice is now for the rich, are they televised? No, you don't need a judge. If you want to influence a case, it's not when you 
put it on when it's televised that you influence it. The court is a public place. The people there, uh, you can always go to the court and ask for any document. It, they are public. It's, they, you have you have a right to any document you want if the court if you pay the necessary fee and go through the normal process. So it, having a, a a system televised has nothing to do with influence of any sort. Well, uh, l l let's also take a look at um, cases like that of uh, Nandekano, cases like that of the former CBN governor, uh, you know, that has been in and out of court, even though detained by the DSS, but they've also been, you know, shuffling, oscillating between the, the courtrooms and the DSS um, holding facilities and all that. How soon do we see such cases come? to an end or is it going to just linger on until another administration comes into power and then you know just keeps going on and on and on when do we see an end to this so that at least the judiciary can also focus on other important matters well like i said it is a lot of issues you know priority of cases attitude of the court the, the judges have so many you know cases in their cost list Judicial officers they state themselves, like I said, they are tired, and then the lawyers to complicate the problem to they come with vigorous application and all of that. And then, so, but um, if the government really wants to sort out some of these things, yes. I think um, it is the government that has the uh, that has the final say. Every country will be run based on what the people want. Uh, especially people in government in this climb, because uh, yeah, when you are in government, you you have you have so much power. You can you can you can you can you can oppress people. You repress them. You you almost take their right out of them because of the kind of system we operate. So it's unfortunate that that's the kind of system that we have right here. But I think uh, the people will decide. The kind of judicial system that they want when they feel that they want a judicial system that is independent that is transparent that is open to the public i think we are going to get it but it is not up hope is not lost like we are talking we need to start engaging the system we need to expose judicial officers to certain facts we need to start engaging the people they need we are we are having our mba conference coming up so some of these issues are issues that will be you know, brought to the table for engagement. And uh, we just pray that um, some of those persons who take decision regarding how our judicial of the judicial system should be run should be open to some of these uh, challenges. Well, well, Barrister Giwa, in closing now, in a very few words, what is the place of the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary in all of this in collectively working together to restore public Simple trust? separation of power. The judiciary should stay on their lane, like we say in Nigeria. The executive should stay on their lane, and the judiciary should stay on their lane. The only thing they should do is that each of these arms um, should check and see that you know they do a check, what we call the check and balances. The purpose of check and balances is to correct when you are deviating, not for you to compromise the system. That is the purpose of checks and balances. Well, I must thank you very much, uh, Barrister Victor Gua, for finding the time to come on the program thank and you share so your much. thoughts with us on this. Thank on you this so much for topic. having me.